Okay, let's get started. This is Hideaki. He's talking about multicast engine on Linux. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hideaki Shuji, and I will talk about uh, some evolution of multicast engine recently. We have, and um, well, additionally, we would uh, I would uh, some present some. Uh, progress in IPv6 core protocol itself. <coughs> and, well, actually, today, this is today's last presentation, so probably I will finish it earlier to go dinner. <laughs> anyway, about me. Uh, my name is Hideaki Shuji, and I am one of core member of Usagi project, which uh, developed uh, an enhanced uh, core and uh, re core IPv6 stack and related technologies. Um, I'm also co-maintainer of uh, networking of uh, PV4 and IPv6 of Linux. Um, well, my main business or <laughs> what, what to say, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm a some professor of uh, Keio University. Um, oh, actually, I'm res researcher of networking, especially for IP especially of IPv6 or AVX stats computing or something like that. <coughs> anyway, so how many people are using really using multicast? <laughs> Only one. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Multicast is probably the term is famous, but uh, probably no one, almost no one use, really ha use that technology. You know, multicast is uh, technology to deliver uh, same information si simultaneously uh, and effectively delivers, uh, to, to, to deliver the Anyway, so, um, you know, <coughs> we have several level, levels of technology to achieve efficient uh, information delivery. So, here is some elements of the technologies we have, and we, and we should have, and uh, I will present some something about that. Um, first, device level group management. Well, this is very fundamental and essential for IBV6 connectivity because in IBV4, we only use uh, unicast and uh, global, global uh, sorry, uh, broadcast. So, uh, in IBV4, to resolve link layer address, we use broadcast address, FFFFFF. But in IPv6, we use multicast aggressively on uh, link layer level. On the in kernel, we have several layers, even in device level group management. You know, uh, you can see uh, if you do IF config or IP command, you can see ETH, ETH1 or something like that. Um, it is managed by net device structure. Um, in that structure, we have MC list structure, and the all uh, membership, all, all multicast addresses are listed in, on that list. The list is singly, singly linked list. Um, under that, we have driver. And on the drivers, we have power driver technology to uh, to set some uh, flags or filters to set some uh, to 
uh, filters. <coughs> um, uh, um, we also, uh, some, some drivers also have uh, promiscuous mode. Uh, all all drivers, drivers has promiscuous mode, and some has all multi mode. And uh, you may know that uh, IP layer may receive multicast packets that may not interested uh, interesting to upper layers. I mean, uh, even if the upper layer did not request to re to receive the multicast packets to specific uh, multicast group, but such such packets might come in to the upper layer. So the so so it is upper layer's responsibility to filter the such unwanted uh, packets. Oh. As I said before, device level multicast processing is critical point for IPv6 because we use that technology aggressively to assign addresses or finding uh, neighbors. So if 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 it does not work, IPv6 is does not work. So it is very important, but. Some drivers did not work because uh, they did not set up multicast filter appropriately. As I said before, uh, ancient authors only considers about the uh, broad uh, broadcast addresses, so. They they did, did not care about the multicast itself. Oh, next, uh, how to fix? So obvious, obviously, uh, the much setting multicast filter appropriately is the first option. But for old hardware, it it can. Uh, it may not so, it may not be supported, so <coughs> we need to have another option. And even even though for even for recent hardware, we may have too many uh, groups to listen to, so we need another option. So that is to change the driver's mode to all multicast mode or polymiscast mode to receive all multicast packets or all packets if the multicast count is not zero. Well, but uh, the problem is well, you know, IPv6 use multicast aggressively, so this re will result in uh, entering always the, to the all multi mode or something like that. So, of course, it is preferred to set multicast entry appropriately, if possible. So. This is this, this show about promiscuous mode versus automatic mode, and you know this is Ethernet frame. Um, it, we have destination address at first. Um, uh, this is the first octet, and this is least significant bit, and least significant bit is the multicast bit. And on the wire, the multicast bit is sent first. I mean, least 
significant bit is sent first. So how do I can determine if the, uh, the frame is multicast or not at, at the very first time? And um, uh, if you set all multi, the how do I can determine V in V early stage of receiving the frame? And if the promiscuous is set, the hardware will receive all the packets. That is the difference. Group management. Uh, in Linux, uh, uh, group management is, has two levels. One, one is uh, per socket API, and which is uh, set up by socket options, and the uh, configuration is stored in uh, socket structure, which is accessed by this one, um, uh, IPv6 MC list has such a list. This is single link list. Um, well, we also have a power interface uh, group list, which is stored in IDEV, which is uh, IPv6 device structure, IDEV's MC list, which is also single link list. Um, we also have internal protocols, such as MLD v1 and MLD v2, which exchange group information between nodes. And uh, MLD v1 is only for any, ca uh, any source multicast only, ASM. And MLD v2 is used for ASM and source specific multicast, SSM. And uh, in standard, standard body, ITF are uh, standardizing a uh, new lightweight protocol, lightweight MLD V2, which is simplified version of MLD V2, but it is uh, interoperable with uh, MLD V2. So, well, actually, at this moment, we do not have we we do not have plan to migrate to this one. But anyway. <coughs> Oh, well, we have one is uh, several issues here. <coughs> As I said, per interface, interface multicast list is uh, inefficient because it is managed by a single link list. You know, um, in fact, this list is scanned at least per, per once per multicast packet. So, I mean, if you get one multicast packet, it, it is scanned once, at least once. If you send out multicast packet, it is scanned at least once, which is not efficient. So here is three places. So in input path, we have two places. So. Uh, in IP6 MC input, we will roughly check if the packet is interesting for us by group address. And uh, after routing, uh, this is after routing decision, but uh, after protocol analysis, we finally check if the packet is really interesting to us in IP6 input finish function. In output path, we, ha we, will ha uh, we have a uh, similar, uh, uh, similar check to IP6 input finish. I mean, uh, it will check if we should boost back the outgoing packet to ourselves. I mean, I mean, for our own listeners. <coughs> so, <coughs> how to fix? Well, uh, 
actually, I am <coughs> developing some improvements about this. Um, well, actually, I introduce I would introduce host entry for group address that we are listening to. S um, well, the standard routing engine <coughs> will find the the most specific entry, this entry, um, <coughs> that will store <coughs> it into the SKB destination entry. <coughs> Sorry. Later, later we can <coughs> determine if the group address is interesting or not by checking the the entry is host entry or not. If the SKB desk is uh, host entry, it is inserted by this logic, so it is interesting. But if it is not host entry, it is kernel default entry. I mean, uh, I will show later, but uh, kernel insert ff colon colon slash 8 entry for every interfaces, so uh, if we are not interested in the such uh, destination. The uh, routing logic will find that uh, default multicast route. And by this way, we can reduce the, the uh, computation from order n to order log n. And probably we could attach a pointer for corresponding group entry, which manage the whole group information from the host entry. Um, by that way, we could eliminate in, uh, working over the group list again to check the source address. That is, the, pros uh, the this process exists in IP6 MC input and IP6 root output too. <coughs> Currently, it searches over the uh, group list again, but if we have pointer, we can really eliminate that process. Um, well, ultimately, we could eliminate uh, this this uh, linked list by uh, replacing it to the, I mean, if we, we have this pointer, we, we have whole information on routing table. So we can eliminate the IDF MC list and replacing worker over whole entries by reading uh, helpers, which is used by IGMP6 event query. <coughs> well, even though we, we still have a single linked list for source address filters, so if we wish, we could introduce hash table for them. Forget forwarding. Okay, finally, from 2.6.25, uh, packet forwarding function was merged into mainline kernel last year. Um, the patch was based on Amikaios patch. Um, the structure is very similar to net IPv4 IPMR.c. Um, well, <coughs> It uses hash table for forwarding cache. Actually, I think this hash table can be merged into routing table, but so far it it seems rather hard. But probably we could do it later. Well, actually, you know, as I said. Uh, 
you have two levels. I mean, local listeners and foreign cash. So probably we need to have some conflicts. So, but, but of course, we, it is not possible. But probably we need to consider uh, deeply. Or yeah, Th that is the difficulty. So does that patch mean you no longer require a separate out of kernel daemon to do IPv6 uh, multicast forwarding? And, and how do you get access to that? Well, I should say we do not need any patch longer, but actually I can confess that, I, I, I need to confess that I received a patch today <laughs> but basically uh, the uh, the main structures are in in kernel so uh, i hope it will be very stable very in very near future so yeah so anyway so uh, currently we support only pms mssm only because, well, actually we think ASM, ASM should die. <laughs> so <laughs> we do not support ASM for now, at least, yeah. Well, 2690, uh, 2629, uh, we will get namespace support. Um, uh, as I told, well, I got many fixes for multicast forwarding. So uh, I hope 2629 will be stable. Oh, here is some routing technologies. Uh, for PMSM, multicast tools, uh, or PIM6SD is available or ZOP is can be used and or we could have some proxy but I don't have a uh, complete or uh, standalone implement implementation of multicast proxy but anyway we, we could have that and tunneling well in standard body we are standardizing uh, some automatic uh, technology for tunneling. Uh, AMT is to create tunnel between multicast enable capable node, but uh, yeah, to, uh, uh, across uh, non multicast links, such as point to point link or tra traditional internet, which has no routing, multicast routing information. Um, with this AMT technology, uh, isolated, isolated site can receive or send multicast traffic. Um, currently, IPv4 only version is available. Um, actually, uh, IPv4 version is being implemented. So th this is a figure of IMT. Um, this is isolated site, and this is native multicast network. Um, that these are connected via this gateway or relay, and gateway and relay can talk to each other via the uh, SUD NBMA link. So. 
So, other topics in IPv6 area? Uh, we got namespace support last year. Um, uh, we have we had more enhancements on specification conformity for IPv6 ready logo, including core protocols and mobile IPv6. Actually, uh, it is reported that the mobile IPv6 stack passed. 100% of the conformance test uh, recently, and uh, we plan to release the, the top tower or kit you know, to public in the future. Um, well, last year, the protocol independent connection tracking system is uh, become non-experimental. You mean we uh, we had experimental flag, but. We, we removed that. So, um, uh, as we talked last year, uh, the project is now voluntary based. Um, uh, new uh, pro uh, small team for maintaining uh, mobile IP stack called UMIP was launched. Um, as I said, we plan to uh, release new kit for uh, mobile IPv6 stack. So overall, uh, multicast forwarding is now available, and I hope it will be soon stable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should say it is stable. <laughs> Unfortunately, some some people say that it is uh, it does not work or something like that. But uh, at at the moment I was I tested it worked. But <laughs> anyway, uh, we have some progress progress here. Um, well, I plan to uh, to eliminate some overhead of much gas packet processing. Um, well, I'm not sure the time frame, but the probably in several months. And other progress are uh, name spaces and mobile IP and uh, net feed or something like that. Oh, that's for, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. So any, any, any questions or <laughs> discussions? <laughs> So, do you want me to explain further about autom automatic multi uh, tunneling? Yeah. Well, uh, I have some slides, but Sending multicast is rather, uh, sorry, Re receiving multicast is ra rather uh, easy. Uh, this gateway and relay has some pseudo tunnel, uh, UDP tunnel between them, and they uh, negotiate, uh, negotiate some, uh, well, it use UDP, but well, they have some three-way handshake, and this will well first. This discovers this relay using multi, uh, anycast, and this will announce the anycast address of the relay. And then the gate, if the gateway has some group to join, the the uh, gateway will send. Uh, uh, request, yes, request message. And then the relay will uh, send back some pseudo, uh, so, sorry, uh, nonce, nonce value, 
And then, at last, uh, uh, finally, the gateway will send the IGMP or MLD message to here. And MT Relay will join that information, uh, join the group by uh, using that information, right? So it's more automated than using a GRE tunnel. With a GRE tunnel, you would have to then manually set up reach. Yeah, so this is automatic setup, right? Yeah. The this one here, this one. Discover, I mean, can you send? Can so with GRE, can the isolated side can send multicast packets? I think so, but the problem is with the GRE tunnel, you have to set up both ends, whereas with this, it's less set up, so yeah, yeah. I think this is better. Yeah, yeah. I think that is a difference. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, when s sending multicast from this side, it is very, co it is rather complex. <laughs> so, uh, the well, actually, the send sending address is the sender's address is uh, encapsulated, uh, encapsulated in the group address or something like that. So, well, then well, the Really will decapsulate or extract the source ad real source address from the group address and send some, yeah, in that way, yeah. Um, I just listened to the talk about the GRE tunnel and the GRE tunnel is a little bit different than the GRE tunnel. I cannot hear. Sorry. <laughs> The, the kernel has a nice um, red-black tree implementation. We don't use it a lot in networking. Um, Dave fussed with it a little bit, but um, it might be perfect for the relatively small normal usage for going to log in on your multicast list. So, and it, I, I mean, I don't think you're going to get as big as, you know, re-implementing, you know, the try like we did for the film. I don't think you're going to get that many multicasts. That's good. worth it. Any other comments? I need to discuss this. I mean, how about? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm curious about the performance on a uh, virtualized environment. Yes, it's unfortunately right now, virtualized because all the multicast stuff is using broadcast. 
Ja. Ja, 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 ja. Ja. So it. So, so the current uh, which is uh, non-intelligent hub. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, is um, is there a movement towards more use of multicast now that uh, some ISPs are starting to look at moving into IPTV? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Uh, well, actually, I am interested in the traffic last night. <laughs> you know. I think there's also more interest in the SSM. Uh -huh. I mean, the previous architecture just did not work um, in a, in a multi-domain sense. And, and now that we have something that works, you know, and something that you can deploy without MSDP storms or other bloody nightmares, um, yeah, it, it's something that you know you might consider a lot of Yes, yes. That is the reason we we do not want to support ASM. <laughs> well, ASM is more feasible <laughs> technology. <laughs> so, any questions or comments, whatever. Thank you very much. Thank you.